Welcome to Valley of the Sun Real Estate Show. Anything and everything you need to know when it comes to your real estate needs right here in the state of Arizona. Hello, Arizona, and welcome to this episode of Valley of the Sun Real Estate Show. I'm your host, Jason Bates, the lender who lives in and is a part of your community. And if you would like to reach out to the show, I would love to hear from you. So please do so. You can reach me at Valley of the Sun Real Estate Show at gmail.com, or you can call me directly at 602 573 3101. You can check out my videos on YouTube. Uh, YouTube, you can just type in Jason, J A Y S O N Bates, B A T S, or you can go to the channel, The J Bates, and that will take you to my YouTube channel. So check out some videos there uh, on some loans, different programs, different properties that are for sale, all kinds of stuff. So hopefully, um, that will be somewhat entertaining for you. Um, and then also, you can also follow me on Twitter. Now, you can follow me at uh, Jason, J-A-Y-S-O-N, Bates, B-A-T-E-S. So, love to follow, uh, have you follow me there on Twitter and keep up to date with anything that's happening here in the Valley as far as real estate goes. So, with that being said, I want to take this time right now to thank you as a listener for taking time out of your day to listen to what I have to say. I really do put a lot into the show, um, and I hope that you get what you're looking for out of the show. So I really do appreciate you taking time to to hear what I have to say. So with that being said, let's get right into today's, into today's subject. In today's subject, we're going to be talking about financing for manufactured homes or mobile homes. You know, I get this quite often. Um, if there's any type of financing for a manufactured home or a mobile home, and there is financing out there, I'm one of the few lenders who can offer that financing for those particular property types. Um, and there aren't many lenders out there, quite frankly, who do offer financing really? for manufactured homes. So I want to put this out there as information for you that if you are looking to purchase a manufactured home, I would love to hear from you and love to help you with that process. Yes. Now, it's important to note here that a manufactured home is slightly different than a mobile home. Uh-huh. So the difference is, is that a manufactured home is like a, sometimes referred to as a prefab home where the home is assembled at, or the walls are assembled at a at a warehouse somewhere and by the manufacturer, if you will, and then they are shipped to the site and then the walls are put up and the roof is put on on site. Where a stick-built home, you, 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 you put up the two-by-fours and pour the foundation and all that kind of stuff and it goes up from the ground up like a typical house. Um, but a manufactured home, the walls are assembled at, assembled at a factory and then shipped to the destination, and then assembled on site. Now, a mobile home is a little different. A mobile home is not attached to any one particular property whatsoever. It's titled like a car initially, so it has a title to the the mobile home. And then you have a tongue on the front of it that helps when you tow it or relocate the mobile home to wherever you're going to relocate it to, and it's usually on wheels or some type of... of, um, I-beam structure underneath that you then can can tow and, and put on site. Now, a mobile home, some people refer to manufactured homes and mobile homes as one and the same. They're actually a little bit different. However, we're going to kind of lump them both together because financing for them can be quite difficult. So, and I'm really going to focus on the mobile homes for this particular, particular episode because mobile homes seem to be a little more popular, uh, a little more... Um, you know, available as far as properties that are, are being sold. So let's, we're going to focus most of my attention here on the mobile homes. So with that being said, on a mobile home, you can get financing for a mobile home. But there are important things that we need to take in consideration when purchasing that mobile home. So number one is that the mobile home must be deeded to the property. And the way that that is done is that's done through an affidavit of a fixture. Now, most mobile homes that are pre, uh, pre-owned pre um, typically have that affidavit of a fixture. But if you're making an offer on a mobile home, you want to know, you want to have your realtor ask the listing agent if the property has an affidavit of a fixture. Now, that would be recorded with the Maricopa County or Pinell County or you know Coconino County Recorder's Office. It is a recordable document. So that's number one. It has to be a deeded property. And what that does is that attaches that mobile home to that piece of parcel or that parcel of land. So they now become one 
piece of property. You can't move one without the other. You can't move dirt, theoretically, um, <laughs> but you, the property stays the same. So now it becomes just like a site-built home. So that's number one. Number two, the property must be 1976 or newer. So prior to 1976, no can do. There aren't many lenders out there uh, who will lend on that. Besides that, most of the value pre-1976 and even older mobile homes, for that matter, 1980, 85 mobile homes, um, most of the value in that particular property is in the land. And so some lenders look at that as a land-only deal because there's no real value in the mobile home itself. So 1976 or or newer, that's the Fannie Mae and the HUD guideline. So that's what we're going with. I don't see too many mobile homes that are 1976 or older. So, um, you know, keep that in mind if you're looking at a manufactured home. Number two, we got to have, we talked about having that affidavit fixture, but we also have to have that, that tongue and the wheels taken off of the property. So that has to come off, um, which most pre-owned mobile homes are going to have that taken off. They generally are taken off right when, uh, w- right when they're placed on the lot. Number three um, thing that we must have is we must have an engineering certification. Now, an engineering certification tells us, the lender, how the manufactured home or the mobile home, excuse me, is attached to the foundation. So you can't have a manufacturer mobile home. Goodness gracious, I got to catch myself there. You can't have a mobile home just sitting on blocks on the dirt. Doesn't work. Sitting over a septic tank or whatever. That that will not work. You have to have it attached to a permanent foundation. And that engineering cert is going to tell us how it is attached. Now it's important that it's attached properly. You can't just have it, you know, attached with some with some rope. Um, I've seen that actually. You can't have that. It's got to be attached through cables and eye bolts, and it's got to be into the concrete and really, really attached. And the whole thought process behind that is if HUD, Housing and Urban Development, is going to lend on this property and insure this property, they do not want this property blowing over, therefore damaging the collateral in a high wind or or straight line winds or here in the the Valley of the Sun, we have monsoons where it gets pretty windy and and the big dust storms. They don't want that that collateral blowing over, damaging the collateral, number one. Number two, more importantly, hurting you if you're sleeping in bed or something like that. You don't want the mobile home falling off the uh, foundation and hurting hurting yourself. So we want to make sure that the property is attached correctly. Now, if you're buying one that's already existing, one of the key questions you may want to ask is what type of financing the current owners have. And if the current owners have FHA financing, for example, then there's a good indi- that's a good indicator that there is an engineering cert certification already attached with that property. Now, the downside there is that most of those homeowners do not record that engineering certification. They put it in a drawer or they put it somewhere, and that's that. And then they forget about it and they lose it. And if it gets lost the new lender needs an engineering certification. Now, if there's one already done and they do have it, we can use that engineering certification. So you don't have to have a new one. Now, the cost of that engineering certification can be quite expensive. It can be thousands of dollars. I've seen them as high as $4,000 for that engineering certification. And then if it's not done properly, it would have to be done properly, and then that may cost you another couple thousand dollars to get it tied down properly. So it can be quite expensive. So you want to make sure before you make your offer that you have an engineering cert or the property has an engineering certification and that the property is, is, um, is correctly put on the, on the, on the foundation. So with that being said, now let's get into the loans here, um, with this. And so now in a manufactured home, you can get FHA financing for that, uh, FHA financing, uh, it's going to pretty much follow the rules when it comes to FHA financing. So there's real no specific credit score uh, that we're going to talk about here that you need to have. Um, it's just an FHA loan. So FHA loans are very popular when it comes to manufacturer mobile homes um, because they really will insure those those properties 
where conventional financing can be a little more tough. There's there's not on the secondary market, there aren't as many lenders who will do uh, a conventional loan. Although you can get a conventional loan on your manufactured home. Pricing is a little bit, um, is pretty steep on those. And so most people elect to go with an FHA loan in that scenario. So as I said before, you must, the property must be 1976 or newer. Um, you know, you're going to follow all the, the bankruptcy guidelines, the foreclosure guidelines, short sale guidelines. All those guidelines are going to stay the same for um, for the profile for financing on an FHA, uh, with an FHA loan on that type of property. Want to make sure, too, that we keep the debt ratio within tolerance. Um, you know, FHA will go to a higher debt to income ratio than conventional in a lot of cases with, uh, with um, extenuating circumstances or compensating factors. Uh, but we want to try to keep that debt ratio well within tolerance on that too, uh, because that can be your one thing that we got to keep in mind here when we're looking at manufactured homes. Number one, there's very few lenders that do that. And so when that happens, the lenders who do do them can um, scrutinize the overall profile, not only of the collateral, but also of the borrower. So I know a lot of people here in the Valley of the Sun will purchase a manufactured home as a second home for example, up in the high country. And that's okay. You can't get an FHA loan for that. That's going to be a conventional loan. But um, they will scrutinize your profile pretty extensively. And most manufactured um, financing for conventional are going to restrict you to at least a 680 credit score in that scenario. Where on the FHA as an owner-occupied, you can get a, a loan with a lower credit score on a manufactured home. Must have the two years employment history uh, most have, you know, down payment, you know, 5% down um, as a conventional loan. And um, really, I, I, let me back up there, 20% down on the conventional loan because no, I don't know of any mortgage insurance currently uh, and mortgage insurance companies that are offering mortgage insurance for a manufactured home or a mobile home um, right now. So you need 20% down on a conventional loan. Where the FHA, you need 3.5% down. So that makes it a little more attractive um, for financing on an FHA loan through manufactured housing. So that's pretty much it. I mean, really, you can get a loan. Um, oh, and I want to go over one other thing here, too, on mobile homes. A lot of times these mobile homes are in parks, mobile home parks. If, the, if, if you own the land associated with the mobile home park, then, yes, it can be lent on through FHA. If you do not own the land and you're paying a lot rent on the manufacturer or mobile home, then no, can't be loaned on because again, you don't own the land. And so the whole purpose of that affidavit of fixture is to tie the land and the home together. It's the only way FHA will finance the property. So if you're looking to purchase a home in a, in a mobile home park, you got to own the land or the lot that is, is associated. And that lot has to be a parceled lot through Maricopa County. So very, very important. Second thing too, I'll mention here on mobile homes is that if a lot of these mobile homes here in the Valley, and I'm sure across the country, and I know up North, a lot of them are on wells and septic tanks. If it's on a well and it's on a shared well, you can't have any more than four people on that well. Now I've seen, um, lenders who been able to get away with more than, you know, four people on a well. Um, I haven't been able to do that. I haven't seen it personally done, but I've heard of other lenders who have had um, manufactured or mobile homes that aren't a shared, shared well that have four, let's say five or six people on that well. And I think you have to get a test done of that well to support that it's going to have water for said certain period of time and that it has a certain um, flow rate to accommodate all those all those people on that. And I think with that, you may be able to get some exception through HUD. I just have never personally had that come up in all, in all of my financing. It's always been four or less. But I know there are si certain situations out there where you may have somebody who has six or seven people on one well. So just keep that in mind too. So if you're on a well, make sure that that's, um, make sure you have the well agreement because you'll need that and make sure that it's up to date and, and all good to go. Um, and then on the septic tank, you'll need a septic ins inspection as well to make sure the septic, there's no problems with the septic tank. Um, 
And these are all things that you will be needing to negotiate in your contract because these things, they they cost money. Um, So if they, if the seller's not willing to pay for it and you don't negotiate in a contract, then you're going to pay for it. Now, getting back to that, that well agreement, I have had where you need to talk to the manager of that well agreement. And I've had, unfortunately, some neighbors, not neighbors of mine, but neighbors of the people who want to purchase the home. They, who was the manager of that well agreement, they would not give a copy of that well agreement. So I I don't know why. Uh, It was very, very confusing to me why they would not want to sell or have somebody buy uh, one of the homes in their neighborhood. Uh, But for whatever reason, they wouldn't give that shared well agreement. So there are situations out there with a shared well agreement that you will have to, um, you know, kind of keep in mind. So go into when you're purchasing a, a mobile home or a manufactured home, go into it with a very, very open mind. Okay. So I think that's pretty much all that we can cover. Or I can cover right now. If you're out there looking to purchase a manufactured home, I would certainly love to talk to you. I've done a lot of these loans. There are a lot of ins and outs, and each situation is going to be a little bit different, but I want to get this podcast out there to let you know that there is financing for manufactured homes or mobile homes. So if you're in that arena and you're looking to purchase a mobile home or a manufactured home, I would love to hear from you. So please reach out to me. I can be reached at 602-573-3101, or you can email the show at Valley of the Sun real estate show at gmail.com. Thanks once again for taking time out of your day to listen to what I have to say. I really do appreciate that. And until next time, I hope to hear from you very soon. Take care. Bye-bye. Jason Bates, NMLS, 220798, mortgage banking license, 011 Equal housing lender, sound effects provided by soundwave.com.